Good health to all from Rexall. From Hollywood, it's the Jimmy Durante Show. Yes, 10,000 Rexall drug stores who carry the complete line of top quality Rexall drug products bring you the Jimmy Durante Show with Peggy Lee, Roy Bargy, and his orchestra, the Crew Chiefs Quartet, yours truly, Howard Petrie, and our cuddlesome Casanova, Dick Moore. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the man who last week relinquished his time on the air so the president could speak. The one and only Jimmy Durante in present. And furthermore, my constituents, even when things go wrong, and I shall go before Congress, you feel better, you even look better. We will lower taxes, raise the tariff, and equalize the status quo. Please, co- please, Mr. Truman, you took my place last week. I gotta make a living, too. <laughs> Jimmy, it must have been quite a surprise for a lot of people tuning in last week and hearing the president instead of you. Tell me, how did the president do? I guess he didn't get enough laughs. He only lasted one week. (laughs) (laughs) If Harry's nose was two inches longer, my job would be in jeopardy. Well, it's good to have you back, Jim. When you were off the air last week, the the airways just weren't the same. I missed your vivacious personality and lovable bon mots. Get used to him, folks. This guy is in radio to stay. (laughs) Hi, Snaz, you're gayer than this season's Easter bonnet. Why shouldn't I be, Howard? It's spring. Ah, I can always tell when it's spring. John L. Lewis comes up out of the ground. <laughs> hey, Snaz, before we go any further, I wish you'd enlighten me on the presidential situation. It gets more confusing every day. First, they wanted to draft Eisenhower, then they called for Stassen, then they called for Bricker. Yeah, Howard, and now the confusion is even more confusing. Listen to the latest candidate they're calling for. He won't make much of a president, but he'll come in handy for emptying ashtrays around the White House. <laughs> this candidate is so short he has to put on elevator shoes to sit down. Say, what else is new on the political horizon, Jimmy? I understand the South is thinking about putting up their own candidate. In your opinion, who would it be? Well, the governor of Alabama. Al- <coughs> that boy it always mixes me up. <laughs> well, the governor of Alabama might have a chance if his lips hold out. <laughs> I always want to say Alhambra. <laughs> but I'm not worried about him, Howard, because when the people hear about the cabinet I've got lined up, I'm a cinch to get elected. Why, whom have you got in your cabinet, Jimmy? Listen to this lineup. Secretary of State, Esther Williams. Secretary of the Treasury, Dorothy Lamour. Secretary of the Interior, Greer Garson. And Postmaster General, Durante. <laughs> Jimmy, you mean, you mean you're going to take care of the males? Definitely not. With a cabinet like that, I'll be too busy taking care of the females. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, will I enjoy playing post office. <laughs> Snaz, you're a ladies' man, and you'll get the vote of every woman in the country. Indubitably so, Howard, because I've got a plan that will improve domestic relations 97%. What's your suggestion, Jim? From now on, before retiring, women got to stop putting their hair up in little pieces of paper tied with strings. <laughs> Why? How can a guy be romantic when his wife looks like 20 cents worth of tea bags? <laughs> And now, in keeping with my democratic principles, I'm throwing the floor open to discussion. If there's anybody in this audience that's got anything to say, I want them to come right out and say it. Now, Mr. Durante, I've listened to your half brain ideas, and in my opinion, you're a political nincompoop, a pipsqueak, and an odd nub phony! <laughs> That'll teach him to beat around the bush. <laughs> Snaz, I'm afraid the strain of the campaign is beginning to show on you. Have you ever thought about a vacation? Have I? I even picked out the place. When it comes to a vacation, I'm a commissure. Now's the time to plan your vacation, folks, to get away from all the congestion. But before you make preparation, folks, I'd like to offer you a suggestion. Now, lots of you might prefer Delmar, where the turf meets the surf. But 
But I prefer Pismo Beach where the debris meets the sea. <laughs> I took a trip there last week, laid down on the sand, fell asleep with my nose waving in the breeze. And what happened? A guy wrapped a bun around it, smeared it with mustard, and sold it seven times. <laughs> Looking for a new vacation spot, I walked into a travel bureau. And the clerk tried to sell me a ticket to Alabama, Miami, Malibu, Rome, Alaska, Madagascar, Finland, Italy, and Greece. I said, nothing doing. I'm not going any place I can't get to before Russia does. <laughs> Suddenly, my eye caught a glimpse of a sign covered with dust that said, See Pocatanta, Mexico, land of the world tacos. I felt so sorry for Pocatanta. People were buying tickets to Bermuda, the Catskill Mountains. Some were even buying tickets to Africa for the malaria season. But nobody was buying a ticket to... Oh! Pocatanta where the mountains meet the dirt. Go! There, fella, if you have to hop your shirt. At night they gather... At the square to do the polka tanta stump. And the moonlight is so beautiful on miles and miles of swamp. Oh, a tanta will be famous by and by. Oh, a tanta where the gophers go to die. Hear the music of the toad and the cricket in the ticket. If you go, make sure you've got a round trip ticket. Save your dough and go, go, go to Seal, Seal, Tonto. As we slowly drift into the suburbs of Poco Tonto, we find that it is situated on the borderline of Mexico and California. Sometimes Poco Tonto's in Mexico, and sometimes it's in California. It's according to which way the wind is blowing. <laughs> it's a dainty town. It's a petite town. It's a small town. Why, the population's so small, the mosquitoes go around biting each other. <laughs> As we drift closer, believe it or not, they got one grocery store, one drug store, one clothing store. In fact, that's all they got, one store. They used to have two stores, but the mayor of the town likes to whittle. <laughs> so say your dough and go, go, go to P.O. C.O. Not to Rio, but to P.O. C.O. Tonto. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall identification. Yes, you can be sure that more than 2,000 different drug products are pure when they bear the name Rexall. For the familiar name Rexall stands for purity, quality, and reliability in a complete line of drug products. It's no wonder that Rexall has won first place in the medicine cabinets of millions of American homes. So for any and for all of your drug needs, always buy Rexall at Rexall drug stores throughout the nation, where 25% of America buys its drug products. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall identification. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Ah, Mr. Peakley, when you talk about Rexall, your voice is really mellifluous. <laughs> and I say that with the dictionary in my other suit. <laughs> you know, Schnauz, with your diction, I can't understand why you didn't win an Academy Award. I was foiled by the fickle finger of fate. The last picture I made wasn't even released in time. It was called The Painted Desert Where the Rio Grande Meets the Alamo on the Lone Prairie Where Cactus Peak Meets Two Gun Techs in the Saddle by the Sage. <laughs> Well, what's it about, Snaz? To medical students in Vienna. <laughs> but not wanting to disappoint our audience tonight, we're proud to present as a special feature the winner of the Academy Award, Loretta Young. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not Loretta. I know, but ain't I young? <laughs> Why, it's Victor Moore. Ah, 
Victor, Victor, seeing you again is trade Jolie. You know, we were separated last week when President Truman spoke, and you were off the show the week before that. How do you feel after two weeks' vacation? Ah, Jimmy, I'm in the pink. It was just what I needed to bring back the old Victor. I spent every day getting myself in shape. Here, feel a muscle in my arm. Okay, Victor. I said feel it, not squeeze it. <laughs> ah, Victor, I'd like to put my arms around you. But Dr. Ballon warned me not to take any long trips. Well, you know, Jimmy, I might as well face it. I'm just not as strong as I was when I worked as a chorus boy at the Amsterdam in New York. Just a minute, Victor. You were in the chorus at the Amsterdam Theater? That's right. Third from the end? Uh-huh. Were you the one who did the solo in the waterfall number? Yeah, that was me. No wonder you didn't answer my mash notes. <laughs> you mean you were cuddled? And on the plume of my ute. <laughs> and to think I wasted that perfume butcher paper on you. But blended from the nostalgia to the inconsequential, tell me, where did you go on your vacation? Well, Jimmy, the doctor told me to get plenty of rest and drink lots of milk, so I checked into a small hotel and took my cow with me. How could you get a cow into your hotel room? Easy. We registered it as Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> must have been a little crowded in the shower. Well, tell me, how did the show go the week I was away? Extemporaneous, Victor, extemporaneous. In your place, we had Van Johnson, the star of the new Metro Golden Mayor picture, The Bride Goes Wild. There's no laugh there, folks, but, saying, but for saying it, MGM is sending me a free bride that goes wild. <laughs> but here's somebody who drives me wild every week. It's Peggy Lee. In present... Ah, Peggy, just like always, it's good to see you. Ah, oh, thanks, Jimmy. Hi, Victor. I miss my little poopsie pie. Mm -hmm. I miss you too, Peggy Poo. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Victor, you're a regular little lambykin. And you're a cuddle bunny. Oh, but you're a sugar bunny. And you're a Dolly Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> if you two miss me, I'm playing gin rummy with a little old lady in the front row. <laughs> Ah, Durrani, you're just like... <laughs> you're just like parsley on a fish. You look good, but nobody wants you. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know how I feel about you, Snars. It's just that, I don't know, since Victor's vacation, he looks like such a rugged, outdoor type. I'm the outdoor type, too, Peggy. Partly because I like fresh air and partly because nobody ever invites me in. Why, on my last hunting trip, I trailed an elk for seven miles, and when I caught up to him, what a tussle. What happened? That elk is now wearing three of my teeth on his watch chain. <laughs> I didn't mind that, but he forgot to give me the secret handshake. <laughs> but enough of this I'll bandage, Pe Peggy. How about a song? We'll sing one? I'd be glad to, Jamesy. Bolero, Mr. Bargy. Bolero. <laughs> That's a magic saying that I heard one day in Napoli When a fortune teller in a dimlit cellar said to me You say, La Rue, Lily Bolero And just like that, quick as an arrow Oh, 
walking through LaRue, LaRue, Lily Bolero LaRue, LaRue, Lily Bolero Here's a 60-second story from the Rexall Laboratory. How blue is blue is a question that the human eye just can't answer. But it's a question that must be answered in the Rexall Control Laboratory. For in many liquid compounds, the intensity of color determines the amount of vitamin A. And that's when science comes to the rescue of the human eye. The Rexall Control Laboratory uses an instrument called the colorimeter, with an infallible eye in the form of a photoelectric cell. The colorimeter's eye sees all and knows all. It measures the depth of color and the strength of the compound instantly and accurately. The colorimeter is only one of the many scientific instruments used daily in the great Rexall Control Laboratory. But it's one more reason why you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. So for any and for all of your household drug needs, always buy Rexall. At Rexall drugstores everywhere. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign A Rexall identification. Good health to all from Rexall. You know, Victor, all this talk about vacations has given me a great idea. I'll use it as a keystone for my political platform. What are you talking about, Star? Just this, Victor. If I'm elected, I'm going to give every man, woman, and child in the United States a two weeks vacation with all expenses paid. Hello, Durani speaking. Uh, Mr. Durani, I just heard about your two-week vacation plan, and I think it's great. And now, if you can arrange my vacation, I'm willing to leave right now. Good. Who is this speaking? Number 57136, Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> I think my party was just hung up. Jimmy, I don't like to be a wet blanket, but if the government is going to pay for all those vacations, isn't it going to run into a good deal of money? This man is talking like a Republican. <laughs> Why, Victor, it's up to us to find an inexpensive place for the people to go. Are you with us, Peggy? Well, where are we going to go? We'll make a survey on the vacation situation and give our report to the nation. Oh. Any state in the 48th is great. The 48 is great and any state is a reason we should celebrate. We ought to celebrate and if you are wishing for hunting or fishing, don't consult any charge. We've got a nation that's full of relaxation. Jimmy, I'm ready to start. We have a magic carpet to take this trip. We pull a string and away we rip. Victor, Peggy, how do you like my magic carpet? Ah, oh, terrific, Jimmy. How much does it cost you? $8,000. $8,000? How come it costs so much for a magic carpet? I bought it from a used carpet dealer. <laughs> <laughs> I got a million of them, a million of them. Any state in the 48 is great. Hey, I have no idea where we are now. Don't let it bother you, Victor. You'll know soon enough. Hey, I know that, John. It's Wisconsin, and the city is called Green Bay. They say it's famous for football. That's not the only reason. It's also famous for its hunting season. You can hunt wild duck, bear, and pheasant. Spend a day that's really pleasant in Green Bay. Well, there's your first vacation spot, fellas. Go on down and see if that's what you're looking for. I'll Come on. pick you up on the next cadenza. Come on, Victor, let's go. Jimmy, this is an awful wild-looking country. Do you think we can find our way out of here? Don't worry, Victor. I've arranged for the best guide in Wisconsin to meet us here. Hey, Schultz. Yo, Leo. Hello. This is where you told us to meet you. Where are we, anyway? Well, let me see now. Wisconsin is bounded on the south by Lake Rouster, on the east by Lake Prouster, and on the other side by Lake Grouster. Now, according to the calculations which is accumulated on my compass, 
We are 44 degrees east of latitude 16, longitude 38. What does all that mean? <laughs> We're lost. <laughs> I think we picked the wrong spot, Victor. How can I tell the voters to come here? Why, there isn't even any food. You're wrong, Jimmy. Look at that clump of bushes over there. I can see the antlers of a moose. You like moose meat, Jimmy? Sure. You like it rare? That's the way I like it. Good. I'll run into the bush, chase out the moose, and when he runs by... Yes? Bite him. <laughs> Good. I can use his tail for a napkin. <laughs> look out, oh. Victor. Look out. Look out. That moose is coming towards us. Out. Oh, Jimmy. He ran right between my legs and his antlers stuck on my pants. What a catastrophe. But don't worry, Victor. We'll have your pants stuffed and set them up in the hallway. What, what good will that do? You'll have the biggest hat rack in Wisconsin. <laughs> Let's go. Any state in the 48 is great. There's a town, but it's all lit up. Let's keep going. Hey, not too fast, man. Down there's a real relaxing town. Do you know where we are, Peggy? Do I? Yes. That's Las Vegas, Nevada, and it doesn't matter if you're rich or broke. You spend and you lend, you make many a friend. This town's okie doke. You play at roulette. Gee, should I make a bet? The name of the town is Las Vegas. Go on, fellas, see if you can relax a little. I'll be waiting on the downbeat, but watch it now. No gambling. Don't worry about us, Peggy. Come on, Victor. Well, Las Vegas, what a town where men are men and women are women, which is a pretty nice arrangement on those long winter nights. <laughs> Gosh, Jimmy, just think, here in Las Vegas, we could get a divorce in six weeks. Why, Victor, how can you say that? We've been so happy together. <laughs> well, let's go into this casino here and get on with our vacation survey. Okay, lead the way. Pardon me, stranger, I'm Jimmy Durante, candidate for vice presidency. Tell me... Is this a good spot for an inexpensive vacation? Why, this is Las Vegas, partner. Not only do you save money here, you make money. Just put a nickel in that slot machine and see what you win. All right, here goes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's going on here? This is an outrage. I'll smash this machine to pieces. Hold on there, stranger. Wait a minute. What are you smashing up my machine for? It's crooked. I just hit two cherries, three oranges, and three plums, and all that came out was nickels. Well, what about it? When Durante wins a fruit salad, he expects to get it. <laughs> Look, buzzard beak. If you know what's good for you, you'll scram out of here. Now, just a minute, buddy. You're talking to a friend of mine. I don't like the tone of your voice. Well, I'd let you have it if it was, wasn't for one thing. Yeah? What's that? I forgot where I put it. <laughs> Any state in the 48 is great Hey, you two fellas have the wrong idea If you want an inexpensive vacation, the cheapest sport is fishing Yeah, all you need is a rod and a bent pen Well, do you know a good spot, Victor? Not only do I know the spot, we're here already We're in Wiggle World, West Virginia where the fish are fat and the worms ain't skinny. See how all the fish will fight to see which one gets the first bite. Oh, wiggle worm. <laughs> ah, there's the spot, fellas. Why, the people around here are so lazy the fish are baiting the hooks themselves. I'll meet you at the intermezzo. Down we go, Victor. <laughs> Gosh, the public will love this place. Yeah, we've only been here five minutes and we got two fish already. Hey, hey, you two. Can't you see that sign? No fishing allowed. We weren't fishing, Mr. Game Warden. Oh, no. Then how did those two fish get in your frying pan? Suicide pack. <laughs> the little one had a hard life. She was married to a pickled herring. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, those two fish are under 14 inches. Throw them back. The next time I catch you pulling them in under 14 inches, I'll give you a summon. 
Rowdy. <laughs> well, hey, Jimmy, look. Beautiful girl just came up out of the lake onto the shore. You're right, Victor. This is amazing. Relax, boys. It's hot breath hula hand. Stand back. You're starting a brush fire in my sideburns. <laughs> Wait a minute, hot bread. How tall are you? Five foot four and a half. Thank goodness. For a minute, I thought I'd have to throw you back. <laughs> uh, I've been doing a little fishing myself. I've been fishing for suckers. Did you have any luck? You're the third today. <laughs> but, uh, I kind of like you, flute snoot. And, uh, you too, Love a lip. <laughs> it gets around. It gets around. Say, uh, say you there with a beak. You, uh, you do something to me. I do? Yeah. You know, muscles, looking at you does something to me. You're the first man that's ever been in these mountains. Kiss me, you beast. Mm. There. What have you got to say now? Somebody has been in these mountains before. <laughs> Victor. Victor, that completes our survey. No matter where you go in this country, you can have a good time. Take me home. Any state in the 48th is great. Green Bay. Las Vegas. Where do we travel north, south, east, or west? No matter what you want, you're sure to get the best. It's great. Wonderful. Marvelous. Stupendous. Any state in the 48th is great. Good health to all from Rexall. We hope you're feeling fine. So always call for Rexall where you see the Rexall sign. Remember, 25% of America buys its drug needs in Rexall drugstores. Rexall is that large and respected family of more than 2,000 different drug products. You can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Available in Rexall drugstores everywhere. Touche, Howard, and I'd like to add, I do my shopping at a Rexall store, buying Rexall drugs, and I pull them more. Hombre, I'll go eat for frozen, too. We buy Rexall, that's all. How do you do? An exhilarating note, Mr. Durante. A note of exuberance, Mr. Petrie. Well, Jim, I guess you're all set for the Easter parade on Sunday. I'll say, Howard, I hope I make the impression I made last year. Why, I was the picture of sartorial splendor. I even used that adhesive tape to hold up my socks. Well, Jim, why did you use adhesive tape? Thumbtacks. Hurt. <laughs> well, that's all for tonight, folks. From Victor Moore, Peggy Lee, Roy Bargy, the crew chief quartet, Dave Barry, and yours truly, Howard Petrie. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. This program was produced and directed by Phil Cohan. Good health to all from Rexall. Good night, folks. Have a happy Easter. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.